Welcome to another episode of All Fired Up. I'm Chuck Parker. We're here with my good friend, Mr. Fraser Quendo, heavyweight boxer <laughs> and good buddy. How you doing, my oh, friend? Man, happy to be back. You know, long time no see. And long time no see. <laughs> yeah, and right. you got a lot of stories to tell, oh, my brother. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a good story. So, we're gonna cut to the chase here. Um, I told you years ago when I met you that if anyone should have a story made a movie, it should be you. That's right. Because yeah. of everything you've been through in the boxing world. Yes. How many titles do you have as a Latino heavyweight champion? Oh, I have like uh, several of them. You know, WBC. WBC. WBA. WBO. IBM, WBA. WB. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you got right. all those. Yes. Yes. That's and right. And you fought twenty-two fights that you won or more. Yes. Yes. When I first started my uh, career, I went. I won twenty-two straight. You know, against undefeated top heavyweight contenders and yeah it was, a, it was a great great start of my career yeah you rocked it mm -hmm. but then here's the reason why I said they should do a movie on you the politics of boxing when you fought mm -hmm. you know what I'm gonna say now oh yeah mr. bird yeah yeah the whole world you kicked his butt and you know it yeah well I know you know it mm -hmm. but I mean I saw that fight and I'm like come on I mean Mm -hmm. Everyone was saying you won the, the title. That's right. That's right. So how did you feel after that? I remember we went out to lunch years ago, and I and I asked you, you know, doesn't mm -hmm. it bother you? I mean, deep down, it's got to somewhere. It's got to like really bother you that, you know, you had the belt, you won it. You know, you won it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it's just sad that uh, the politics of boxing again. It was my last fight. And with Don King Productions, right? Not to say no more with that name, as you can now, see. Now, I'm going to stop you there. Do you think that had anything to do with it? Because I do. Oh, most right? likely, absolutely. Even George Foreman, that right. was his last. Because George fight Foreman said it too. Yeah, he retired after that fight. Never commentated no more heavyweight fights since that. Really? HBO fight period. Right. Mm -hmm. So then, after that fight, he had another little upset. Who was that with? Oh yeah, you know when I fought the, the great Evander Holyfield fight, there a lot of people. Thought I won, but again, you know, the politics of boxing, and here I am again. I think it was because it was close. I saw the fight. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty close, but I, I think know, he won too. I mean, even the San Antonio Express newspaper, which is the most prestigious newspaper in San Antonio, right. where Holyfield was trained at the time and, and his home state at the time, and, um, you know, it's just this, this, this boxing so injustice of, of the career of uh, Fresno Kendall, but here I am today. So at the advanced age and still mandatory contender, even though I'm going through the uh, trials and tribulations against oh, know, these corrupt promoters. Oh, are you kidding me? Promoters. The Russian thing? Yes. Come yes. on. <laughs> What's with that yeah. now? Well, you know, we won the case. Yeah, so. but you, when you did, had that mm -hmm. fight, mm -hmm. um, that was kind of a last-minute thing. You weren't feeling well, right? Well, no, I was feeling great. I trained very hard for the fight. My wife just had my son, Liam. Oh, uh, okay. A beautiful boy. And uh, they ended up getting sick in the hospital. So this is like literally a week before oh, so the fight. Oh, so they were the ones that were sick. Yes. And it was a week before. Yeah, so I just can't leave my right, right, right. ailing you know, newborn right. and my wife in the hospital. I mean, I didn't feel right. You right. Know, it was just a mental thing. Boxing is 80% mental, 100% right. you know, physical. So that's very important. A lot of people don't know that boxing is, is majority mental. So, of course, going to a fight, in the back of my mind, thinking about my son, very ill, my wife. I mean, it, it, it was it was a tough decision decision that I made, and and um, an adequate time the last couple of days before the fight, which it, in two days I ended up deciding to, to to do the fight, which was crazy. So this first time in boxing championship history that <laughs> I right. accepted the fight in two days notice. Two days notice, and I still did the improbable and outpointed and pretty much beat Ruslan Chigayev, who's from. Uh, Chechnya at the time, Uzbekistan, and that's how I still got my uh, rematch, and uh, the money that we're supposed to pay, they never did, they never gave me the rematch, so that's why I ended up suing them at, at the Southern District of uh, New York, which, which was a great judge and powerful judge that made a great, great decision on, on my behalf because that was justice. So you got it? Yes. So you got your pay? Well, I didn't get my whole pay, but... I did get my rematch, but again, the world box, the, the sanctioning bodies at the time that I was sanctioning that fight, they ended up pretty much uh, put me in with all these fighters that tested positive with steroids and then other fighters that... Because you had one recently. Yes, that, yes. 
steroid came into the picture. Yes, right? yes, and that's uh, Manuel Char. Right. Was supposed to fight last year in Germany. And just, again, a week before the fight, a week or two before the fight. Tested positive. Tested positive. Yeah, these guys, you know, they try, try to get advantage, you know, which is, you know, bad for boxing. You know, right. It's a very, very black guy. And don't boxing. they have enough smarts to know that they're going to be tested? I know you come thought on. they do, but come they're on. kind of dumb. They're very dumb nowadays. <laughs> right. Yeah. So now, what, what's in your cards? What are you, what, what are you, what you, what are you planning on? Well, you know, I still got one more chance, you know, in faith in God, you know, the World Boxing Association and these other, you know, people that's involved in my um, trials and tribulation. You know, I have court at the file suit against right. these German promoters and try to get my, you know, my rights, you know, put on. And, um, you know, I got trial November 14th, the last day, and God willing, you know, things will be right because, of course, he has a positive for steroids and these former, you know, associates of mine. Uh, the Germans, you know, they're pretty much uh, in cahoots and uh, try to get me out of the heavyweight picture. So now, you know, here, here's a guy that's been in the field, in the boxing, mm -hmm. your whole life. Mm -hmm. And you hit the ups and the downs and a mm -hmm. lot of downs. Right. How do you stay, you said 80%, 20%. Right, focus. And, and you know I'm a martial artist, so exactly. you know that I fought, for, exactly. I fought 12 years. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't look at a big guy and go, mm -hmm. I'm afraid of you. My mind would be like, <laughs> right, right. let's go, yeah, my right. brother. Bring it up. Absolutely. I, that never bothered me one bit, even though I might look like he'll <laughs> kill me. But anyway, uh -huh. so how do you keep mm -hmm. not only the mental but the physical mm -hmm. going? But a good thing, you know, I, I live a clean life. You know, I, I always stay very productive when it comes to my health because that's my main goal to right. teach the future, you know, health and wellness, which is one of the programs that I have in my, my foundation. But getting back to me, um, you know, it, it's, it's a way of life, you know. Uh, you know, the, the, the sweet science of boxing, you know, I've been doing it since the age of 13, but very carefully because, you know, this is an individual sport. It's right. not like basketball, baseball, right. football is a team sport. Boxing, you got to be 100% with yourself, you know. If not, then, you know, you're, you're pretty much playing with fire. So, right. so you know, um, boxing is very, very, very strategic, and um, it keeps me, you know, up to par and, and focused. So when you train, I mean, what kind of, I mean, I know how I used to train and how I still do train. How do you train, like, every day? You, you, you're doing something yeah, every day? Yeah, little something. Yeah. you probably do, right? Yes, yes. Because you have run, to. Yeah, exactly. Because you still look great. Thank you, thank you. Still you still look like you just Try, knock somebody out in four seconds. Try to hang with the young guns. That's yeah. it, brother. You got to. You know, yeah, because a lot of people ask me, like, man, Fred, how do you keep on going with this, you know, travesty and boxing and justices in your career? And, right. And recently, and... You know, they crowned this guy who tested positive for steroids last year, and they unsuspended it, and now they put him as champ the WBA, which is wrong right. you know, on my behalf. You know, it's in God's hand. You know, I stay focused. You know, I'm, my job is to stay focused, keep myself, you know, ready 100%, which, you know, I got my physicals, you know, my uh, uh, from the Illinois Boxing Commission. You know, they approved me that at my advanced age, I'm ready to fit and healthy to fight for a world championship. And I think you can do it. Oh, yeah. Because I think oh, you yeah. definitely got that mental thing going. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because you know you want it more than anybody else. That's right, right? that's right. And the ex excellent character traits mm -hmm. is perseverance. You know that's that. That's right, yeah. So you just got to just there you keep go. that yep. focus keep and just moving. keep on rocking yep. it, right? Absolutely. You know, yep. do your sprints. Yep. Do your bag work. Do your that's right. ring work, yep. right? Yep. And who that's do you right train right. with? Oh, my trainer, Nate Jones. He's Floyd Mayweather's assistant trainer. He won the 1996 Olympic bronze medalist. He actually, he was my former arch rival in the amateurs. You know, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. We go way back. He was from the Cabrini Green Housing Projects. I was from Nathan Holmes Housing Projects. So we were cross town. Right, right, right. And nowadays, you know, we're the best of friends. We're like cool. brothers. Cool. Cool. Because you had some top people behind you. Oh yeah. In oh, the yeah. corners and oh, everything yeah. else. Yeah. Who's name a few of them? Uh, beginning Felix Trinidad Senior. See, Tito there Trinidad's you go. Father. Everybody knows Tito that. Tito Trinidad, of course, Freddie Roach, who trains one Roach. Of iconic fighter, Manny Pacquiao. That was my right. stable mate, and now Nate Jones. So I've been blessed to have great, great right. trainers and mentors in my career and life. Did you ever meet Pacquiao? Yes, yes. Oh, is he? Because he seems like a pretty cool. Very guy. down to earth. You know, he's a people champion. 
you know, world champion, obviously. Right. But more importantly, he works for the for his country. You know? Right, and he's doing a lot of good exactly. stuff. Yes, in yes. his country, just like you are here. Yes, with your foundation, exactly. your academy. That's right. So that's what I really dig about you. You thank know, you're you, thank you. you you've 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 hit the top of your field, in my opinion, and thank most you, people's thank opinion. You. Absolutely. But now you're doing this. You're still keeping that focus. Yep. You're Keep still moving. now you now you want to do it with the kids. Yes. Because you know the correct. kids is where it's at. Yes, that's that's absolutely you know? right. Mm -hmm. So how's that Future. working out? Oh, it's working it looks out. pretty cool, man. I, I follow you on oh, all thanks, that stuff. Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, we just had our first, you know, annual uh, Building Champions uh, benefit, and it was a success, you know. We had and I know you invited me, and I couldn't make it because <laughs> I was out of town working, <laughs> right. and I'm going like, oh, yeah, he's going to be my show. <laughs> Here I am blowing him off on his first, his first foundation. You know what? It was great. Fundraiser. You know, we had, you know, close to 300 people. Uh, wow. A lot of people Good came out to support me. Uh, great, iconic basketball players like, you know, uh, 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 Kendall Gill, uh, Craig Hodges, former champion. Nice. You know, they they, they uh, always supported me, and um, you know I feel great that uh, I have so many other supporters that you know always uh, reach out to me, and uh, especially um, my partners, Aspida, Aspida Charter Schools, uh, you know with the Chicago Public Schools. Right. They're my new partners. They're the one that gave me you know, a chance to you know mentor their kids, right, work right. their kids. That's and, sweet. And I've been able to. Uh, succeed in um, accomplishing their kids' goals, you know, the kids in Aspida, my partners, and uh, man, it's a great, great partnership, and we, we, we're right now with three high schools and a middle school, so we're servicing many, many boys and girls, and we got a lot of girls, but are <laughs> tougher yeah. than the boys, oh, I love it. No, that's cool. I love it, yeah. And how many, you know, how do you, how do, you do that with, the, with, you know, how do you organize that when they how big is the place? Number one. Oh yeah, it's pretty big. It looks got, pretty big. Yeah, I got my own uh, gym with the school, with the Aspida Charter School. So uh, I have two facilities: one at the uh, uh, Pantoja High School, Aspida, which is on uh, Belmont and uh, Pulaski area, Northwest South Avondale, Al Albany, and then Albany Park, the middle school. And um, you know these kids, it's just amazing how at the age of you know sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Just want to, want to try the sweet science, and it gives them a lot of discipline and motivation. And that's what confidence. they need. That's yes. what they need. That's correct. Because maybe there's a one-parent household. Yes. Maybe it's and that's probably half of it, right? Yes, you yeah, know that for sure, right, especially in the neighborhood. Um, and and they if they they need somebody like you, yep. And people to look at them, going like, look at this guy, look at this, look right, at this. Right, we right. need this. That's right. Yeah. You know, you're like dad. <laughs> yeah, right? pretty much. Yeah. You gotta be. Yeah, I mean, it's my passion. It's something that my dad instilled in me as I was a kid growing up. Because, um, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my dad always had, you know, loved a lot of kids and I always introduced it to a lot of his friends' kids. And, you know, I used to want my dad's time. My dad said, no, no, you got to love all kids. You got to give them second chances. Right. You know, even though it's not my son, but I treat him like my son because, you know what, I want you all to instill that in your heart and help those, help others, kids that are unfortunate, don't have it like you, you know. And, you know, I learned that trait from my dad. May God bless his soul. He died. Um, uh, a year ago, yeah, this sorry day, here, and, brother. Um, you know, his his uh, legacy still living on. Right. Mm -hmm. That was tough for you. Yeah, very of tough. course. I was right before my be. my fight when I was supposed to fight in Germany. You know, weeks before, my dad died, and um, then next, you know, this guy tested positive for steroids. Uh, so it was a rough year. And, and you're actually. going. Come exactly. on, God. It, what, what did I do? Well, no, yeah. God got some plan. No, I know, but it, it happens. You, you know, still, you still got a question. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Not question that way, but I mean. You know. Yeah, I got you. But, it's, you know, perseverance, like you right. said earlier. Perseverance. That, yeah, that's, that's it. So, mm -hmm. so, any of the fighters that you fought, mm -hmm. do, you, do you keep in contact with any of them? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, me and Nate Jones, my former amateur arch rival, right. he ended up beating me to go to the 1996 Olympic medal. Right. Uh, he medaled uh, bronze. You know, it could have been me. I could have medaled bronze or gold or anything, you know. And, uh, yeah, another... Uh, pro fighters like uh, uh, let's see uh, you know we used to spar a lot like Montel Griffin the now Doc Nicholson these are like my big brother mentor yeah, yeah. that I used to spar with all the time so yeah so you still see him talk yeah, to yeah. him hang out yeah, with him come to my come to Chicago to my and they live around here or out of town yeah they're out of town but they come in to support you know my cause cool and Lamont Brewster former heavyweight champ who knocked out uh, Vladimir Klesho he's another one that supports my foundation, and um, I thank these grand champions a lot for being there for me. And what's with those clutch goal guys, the brothers, right? Well, they're done. They're history. <laughs> what the heck? Were they, were yeah. they just sitting on their title? Yeah, oh, yeah. not fighting? Yeah, it was interesting, but 
You know, the politics, again, it's all again, about... Why are they doing that? That's what just kills me, because I love yeah. boxing. It was for a long you know, time that they held the titles hostage. Yeah, you're right. They held it <laughs> hostage, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Because what are you going to do? Yep, they yep. don't want to fight. They, right. I don't want to fight you, because didn't you, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, but didn't you offer one of them fight for everything? Yep, that's right. Right? Yeah. See, I remember stuff. Wow, good memory, yes. <laughs> I did. But they decided they to go with a challenger, you know, which is more... Easy because my But you know what kind of the, draw that would be with that moxie that you had by saying, I'm going to, listen, mm -hmm. I don't care about the money. Right, right. I want this. Exactly. The glory, so, the glory. bring it on. Exactly. Winner takes all. Exactly. Yep. That yep. would have been such a big purse mm -hmm, and such mm -hmm. a cool thing to do for boxing, right. I right. think, because that's old school. No, absolutely. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, because that's something I'd do. Yeah. Because I don't care about Same the money. Here. Bring it on. Let's right. go. The glory. The glory. Right. Yeah. Because you're going to fight and you're going to train anyway. So exactly. let's, just, let's yep. just make it big. Yep. Exactly. Right? Yep. But they that's turned true. you down. That's right. You're right, Chuck. And, and nobody did that, anything about it. The politics of the game. You know, we thought Don King, we got rid of him. Now, this heaven, but now they're gone. So now we got a new generation. So, so how do you think it's going to be? Uh, it's going to be interesting. You know, uh, Anthony Josh was fighting. Um, and Andy Ruiz, the kid who just upset Anthony Joshua from England. So they're fighting, I suppose, to be in Saudi Arabia. It's going to be interesting. Um, that's the new generation, and uh, I look forward to seeing that, that fight. So what do you think that boxing has to do now to, you know, everyone's talking about MMA. You know, that's obviously mm -hmm. huge yeah. nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, but it's different because mm -hmm. people always ask me, being a martial artist, mm -hmm. could you have done MMA? Mm -hmm. in my prime right, right, right. and I couldn't have because mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't have that I'm going to take my elbow and knock your eye out right. I don't <laughs> I don't have that right, right, and, right. and I know you have to have that yeah. for MMA oh yeah but it's not boxing oh no it's not no sweet science no. It's, right it's, there's no I'm sweet not science it's, savagery, it's, but it's, I'm not it's saying it's, 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 right, right. it's not easy it's right, a, right. I mean I'm not saying it is easy it right. is hard yes, but yes. what I'm saying is it's not the same. Exactly. But mm -hmm. now you got this younger generation yep. doing MMA. Yep. That's right. But the younger generation also getting into the boxing. So what mm -hmm. do you think boxing has to do to kind of get back up equal to MMA and surpass MMA? You're right. What, yeah, do, you, got, what got, do they have to do? They're going to have to get rid of all the BS politics. Exactly. The and they got to do it type. right. Exactly. Treat the fighters right. You know, paying what they deserve to be right. earned. And, and, you know... Justice, you know, it's so important, you know, for fighters to, you know, stay mentally focused, you know, like myself, you know, the, the boxing politics that try to take me out the game at my advanced age, and, and that's just wrong, you know, it's just wrong. I mean, let me get my fight. Let me yeah, but you keep on saying, you've said advanced win, age to me draw. four times. I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, I'm right. 15 right. years old. <laughs> Stop saying that. Right, right, right. <laughs> So, but what I'm saying though, with with your advanced age, didn't uh, what's his name Foreman? Yeah, actually, I come on, Foreman fought. Exactly. How old was he? He was like 50. 40, yeah, almost. Yeah, I think he was 40. close to 50, 58, yeah. 48. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think he right. was when he came back and said, "Because well, he had moxie and he's like, come right. on, that's right. You can you're take right. a punch, yeah, right? Right? Yep, that's yeah, that's that power, that little punch. Now I remember punch. seeing on on social media, you had a picture taken with good old Muhammad Ali. That's my mentor, yeah. Right? That's right. Now, who doesn't yeah. love him? Exactly. The greatest of all time. I think so, too. Yes. Now, did you? was he able to talk a lot or no? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But uh, throughout the years, it came, you know, it deteriorated. I mean, and when, you, when you met him and saw him with that picture I saw, was yeah, it? 1999, yeah, he was, he was still. He was still a, okay shape. a little bit? He was still talking, but real low. Right. Real low, yes. Because that's talk. a bad sickness, yeah. what he had, brother. Right? Sad, I yeah, mean, all his life. Been, yeah. Right. But yeah. uh, so yeah. you met him. Yeah, it was iconic. It's one of the best glory days of my career. Yeah. Yeah, meeting one of the all time great. Did he talk to you at all about it? Yeah, he, he was there when I fought, my, when I did my Vegas debut on a Mike Tyson undercard when he fought Francois Bolt at that fight where Mike Tyson almost broke his opponent's arm. Really? And the guy was out boxing the heck out of Tyson, but he ended, Tyson ended up catching him with a punch and knocking him out. But he was losing. Tyson was losing. And Ali was right there on the Frank side. And, and right after Tyson knocked the guy out, I ended up coming to fight. I was, you know, oh yeah, right after the fight because Mike Tyson's the main attraction, of course. So it's unfortunate, you know, I didn't have the TV or camera on me, but that was one of my best victories coming up, you know, right on the Mike Tyson undercard. So you met Tyson. 
Oh, several times. Yeah. A lot, right? Yes, yes. Went to How is he? Because he's, he's pretty so, low-key now. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's a different like, man. Oh, right? yeah. He's got that ranch cattle, you know, smoking like $40,000 of hydro uh, a month. I don't know if you heard about that. No. Hey, what is weed, that? Uh, hydro, figure speak, weed. Okay. Uh, marijuana. Oh, that's what a, he's doing? He's got a cattle. Oh, yeah. He's got a marijuana cattle. Yeah, he's he makes millions. Oh, he's really? Set. Oh, yeah, man. So he man, lost it all. But he gained it. But he got it, it back. Yes, yes. Very and I think he got movie. it back because of those movies, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, because the were doing the hangovers. Oh, and then great. all of a sudden that became <laughs> popular. And all of a sudden, now, then you started seeing him on other, you know, Show. be it shows yeah, and yes, just yes. things. That's so right. he was smart. Right, because, you know why? Because he cleaned his act up. There you go. And he Mark wasn't it. an idiot. Exactly. Because he was in that, I am going to. Just, exactly, just an idiot, exactly. Just a bulldog crazy guy, right? <laughs> right, 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 exactly, yeah. But he lost, I wonder how he lost everything. Did he ever tell you? Well, you know. Was it, it bad management? Just bad, people stealing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And of course, Don it's spending. Don King, too? Yeah, it was his, his promoter. Oh, Don so King. So there you go. He can't stand Don King. If you see one on not. social media, Don King was passing by uh, Mike Tyson's like, at the beginning of this year, and he touched Mike Tyson's shoulder, because we're friends on Instagram, me and Mike Tyson. As, as he touched Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson looked, it was Don King. He had a big old cup of water, put it right in Don King's face. Oh, I was so happy to see him. Nice. I was like, good for you, Mike. <laughs> he would get up there and grab him, but I'm glad he caught right, him. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, would have. Yeah, exactly. 15, Don 20 King, years Don ago, King, he would have. Right? Oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. <laughs> Don so King's King, little spiky hair would have been. He slipped through the cracks on that one, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's cool, though. Yeah. So you get to hang with some of those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. you got your big Chicago Cubs guy. So you, oh, kinda, absolutely. Right. You said Chicago. you were mentioning earlier about uh, your foundation, some of the supporters. Is Baez, you said? Yeah, his uncle. Uh, his uncle? Yeah, he supported my foundation, and uh, that was cool. And then, uh, you know, I still haven't had the chance to meet Baez in person, but, you know, we've seen each other through social media and all that. Right. So I'm still hoping, you know, Baez, you know, if you're reading this, Seen this show. Well, they're not doing anything now. <laughs> so maybe, You're right. maybe you got a lot of time. You got a lot of time. Right, right. So right. I signed some, some gloves for me and some right. uh, posters for the kids. Hey, when I first met you, I remember you brought over a t shirt. I was going to bring it. I couldn't find it. Oh, wow. Because I moved. I told you I moved. Yes, yes. So I had one of your t shirts that oh, you wow. signed. And I still had I put it in. You know where I put it underneath? Mm-hmm. You're going to like this. Under my Joe Montana jersey. Oh, wow. Signed jersey. What I put great, that. So you're right next ball. to Joe Montana wow. in my, in my right. archive somewhere. Holy cow. That's <laughs> one of the greatest quarterback in history. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I shouldn't say that because it was under there. And then my son was in the Air Force, I told you about, mm-hmm. that he comes to my house. Because he bought a house in Delaware, and he, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, I see in his bag, right, mm-hmm. and I see my Montana jersey on the bag, and mm-hmm. I go, "Hey, what are you doing with that, buddy?" Mm-hmm. He goes, "Well, it's in your closet." Mm-hmm. He goes, "I might as well take it." Mm-hmm. I go, "Well, that's my Joe Montana jersey." <laughs> but right, you're not right. doing anything with it. Let right, me hang right, it right. up. I go, "Take it, brother. What's <laughs> wow. mine? Is take, what, take all my stuff. I don't oh, care." Because wow. you get to a point where you go, "Who cares?" Yeah, I right. Get you, I get and you got yeah. kids, you know. Of How's course. your kids doing? Are they getting big? I got, you know, my kids are. Uh, Fresh Jr., he's getting ready to graduate in his last year of uh, at Northern Illinois University. Uh, he's doing uh, a lot of, you know, production, movie, engineering, you know. Is that what he, like that's that. what he's trying to pursue? Yeah, yeah, that's what he's trying to pursue. So he might want to Production, movie? Yeah, exactly. Really? So we talk Is he to doing him, yeah. cameras? and What's he doing with yep, that? Yeah, he does cameras, uh, editing, all that stuff. Really? Yep, yep. Well, what see, we're going to have to talk. That's right. Yeah, because we'll be in the family. See, one thing, no, no, because one thing I, you know, I, I try to... Uh-huh. I, I ran into a lady once mm. that we were talking, and, and the kid, mm. I says, I'm doing this TV show called mm. Backroads Bars. Mm. And then she goes, oh, that's cool. And she goes, my son here mm. is, uh, is, does, does uh, soundtracks. Mm-hmm. And I go, well, if he'd like to do a soundtrack mm. to this, there's really no money in it right now. Right. But, and she goes, well, I ha- he's got to make a lot of money. Oh, and wow. I go, that's not how it works, ma'am. Right. I'm telling you right now. Right, right. People have to say, I'm working on this to put on their websites, to put on their, exactly. you know, for credentials. Yes. Whether it's a national, you know, national show right. or not, you have to do that kind of stuff mm-hmm. to give you experience to yes, do it. That's correct. So just like your kid, you know, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Just because he's your kid doesn't mean he's going to do anything exactly. unless he starts doing it. Yep. Doing you know, the right, yep. and saying, "Look, I'm I'm doing camera for this TV show, Back Roads Bars. I'm doing some editing for this. I'm doing this. Right. I'm, that's what he's got to do. That's correct. And if they don't want to listen, then you're going to be on a hard road. Exactly. That's what I tell these guys that's because the this is Chicago. It's not yep. L.A. Right. So if you're going to stay in Chicago, you mm-hmm. gotta you gotta 
start working yeah, exactly. in Chicago. Yeah, sure, got to success, you know. hard work. So yep. you want to be a boxer? You can't, yep. like, oh, I'm going to train for a half hour right, once a week. Right. Exactly. That'll get me somewhere, right? right? right. I'll get them to the you floor, know. right? <laughs> <laughs> Real fast. Right, right, quick. But, so when you're fighting, I'm going back to the fighting thing. So mm-hmm. I'm all over the board. Mm-hmm. Kids fighting, I, whatever. Mm-hmm. But are you nervous when you go in? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're Cause, terrified. Cause I Mike think Tyson, you have to be. everybody, that's the natural. Did Mike Tyson friend. say he was? Of course. You yeah, know, Muhammad Ali. Every time he'd just knock him out in a second. Yeah, no, but him too. Yeah, just the name of him. Muhammad Ali, yes. I've heard it from the greats that, yeah, Tito Trinidad, just the name of him. Absolutely. If you don't you have, have that funny, something's wrong with you. Right. I mean, you shouldn't even be in the ring. You get hurt because right. you don't. I mean, you're just gonna get hurt. That's not normal. Because mm-hmm. I think I think you know when, when mm-hmm. you're going in there, it, it's not just oh I'm gonna fight you. Right, right. It's everything you did to fight you. Exactly. And that's in there. And you're thinking yep. you study the tapes, you mm-hmm. study this, you mm-hmm. see what he's doing. You're mm-hmm. doing, you know. When I had my masters teaching me stuff, they were ta- t- they were mm-hmm. like you said. That's so why I like the eighty twenty you know analogy right. because there's they're looking at me and going okay you don't look like you're you can do anything right, 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 right. they're honest exactly. they're masters right but here's the advantage you have you know what you're doing right so right. you got to use body language mm-hmm. to make them think yep. you don't know what the hell you're doing <laughs> right right so right. then they're going to have that confidence mm-hmm. way up here mm-hmm. and then when you come in and you throw a kick and knock them in the face really fast exactly they're going to go what the heck just happened exactly. here? I right. thought this kid couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then you start dancing, Bruce Lee dancing around just to screw him yep, up in their yep, mind. Yeah. So I knew how to mess with their minds. <laughs> you know, that was one. the fun part of it. That's I awesome. knew how to mess with their minds. That's but awesome. Just so with the boxing, it's the same mm-hmm. thing. You're yep. looking at tapes. Yep. You're going, well, he doesn't like if I do this, if, right, if I do right. this. The strategy. You know, mm-hmm. you know, there's got to be the strategy mm-hmm. there. Oh, absolutely. You look at hours and hours of yep. tapes, That's right? True. Yep, absolutely. And you just sit there with your coaches and they're telling you, just do Strategy. this. Watch yep. this guy, because when he gets into this position, exactly. you got to do this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's boxing. So this was a this was a quick half hour, wasn't it, for us? Oh yeah, man, it's awesome. It was, man. It was so great, brother. About, yeah. I really appreciate you coming yeah, in, yeah, brother. On this likewise. drizzly evening night, yes, or yes, evening, yes. But uh, I had a good time talking to you. Likewise, and, brother. And uh, I want to come and see your foundation. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. maybe we'll you have you we'll have you on another show to talk about your okay. foundation a little okay. bit more. Maybe mm-hmm. go over some you know boxing tips something you know more physical where we're standing up doing stuff you just show me what you do because i like the visual part yeah but again thank you sir thank you brother parker and your foundation is what real quick f-o-b-a-i-n-t-l dot org please check it out donate for these beautiful kids i'm working with girls and boys great cause everybody that are doing great help mr aquendo and the kids foba intl.org right on thanks brother thank you